So here's the true star of the show, a hibachi grill. Hey guys, welcome to Four Seasons with Ken Johnson. As you can tell, it's kind of a rainy, wet day. Just not a good day for filming. Uh, the reason uh, why I'm doing this and a lot of the others is I'm trying to get caught up on videos. And so I, I just, I'm out here, out and about, and I thought I'd do this intro real quick. But what it is, is in 2000. 19 I got into a wreck it messed up my back and spine um, and my neck all that in three spots I got a brain injury from it uh, what they call traumatic brain injury uh, I had to have nerves burnt in my neck which if you never had that done it is painful I've been doing some injections the injections was for another issue, but ironically, it's had an impact on my memory and my muscle recovery, which is something that I've needed help with. So it has been helping out in a number of ways. Unfortunately, due to Biden's America, um, we can't get the drug. It's on back order. Been on back order for a month now. Uh, another issue that we've had a problem with is that the drug that I'm taking right now costs $130 out of pocket because insurance don't cover it. Um, the drug that I could take that they do cover was killing me. Um, messing up my liver, thickening my blood, it was causing all kinds of problems and I never felt good. I felt bad. So um, with this, ironically, th this is the other issue that's kind of ironic. If I had a vet write me a prescription, I could get the injectable for $35 from Walmart. It would just be pet med. So, you know, there's a different standard there. But, you know, I think it's ludicrous that we have pet meds that are so cheaper than human meds. And it's basically the same thing. We should have cheaper medicine. There's no reason why we shouldn't have cheaper medicine in America. And that, that's an issue for another day. Um, but really, the, the star of the show, I, I said in the beginning of the video, was the hibachi grill. But really, it wasn't the hibachi grill. It was me putting it together. I did not film me putting it together. It took a long time still. Um, I still don't have all my abilities back together. I still fumble and drop a lot of stuff. But it's the fact that I was able to do it because I got the I got the hibachi as a Christmas present back in December 2019 after the wreck. And I was unable to put it together until this past February of 2022. That tells you where I'm at in my state of recovery that I was finally able to put together a very simple grill that I've been unable to put together. And you can tell it's just a simple, easy grill with fairly easy instructions, but I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And so this was kind of a, a celebration of me being able to recover to a state now where I'm getting back to the way I used to be. And so I hope you enjoy this, even though it's technically a cooking video. Just keep in mind what that grill represents to me. And so I just want to say thank you for everyone that has been supporting me. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, hit that bell, and please share. Anytime you find a video of mine that you like, share, because that is so important to growing this channel. And I thank all y'all for your support, and I hope you enjoy this video. When have you ever seen choice steaks look this good? I'm going to take them and I'm going to season them with a little bit of salt. We're going to put a good dose of that on there. Now we're going to add just a sprinkling of black pepper. 
And when I say black pepper, I'm actually talking about McCormick's Peppercorn Medley, which if you look at it, it's more than peppercorns. It is black peppercorn, coriander, pink peppercorn, uh, then you have white peppercorns, allspice, and green peppercorns. So it's more than just black pepper. Um, that's important to note with that because it's just full of flavor. And then from there, we'll add the next ingredient, garlic powder. So we'll put that on there. From here, we'll do the same thing to the other side and also the edges. Once it's totally done, I'll wrap this up in plastic wrap and let it sit. Um, I want to bring these to roughly about room temp. You don't want to grill a steak cold. That's a key tip. So these will stay out roughly about in the morning hour um, and then they'll go on the grill. One other thing I want to talk about, this is called dry brining. This is the best way of infusing flavor into your steaks. So uh, I highly recommend you try it. Like I said, about an hour. You can go a little bit longer. You can go up to two hours out of the fridge, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, basically, you just want to get it up to about 65 to 68 degrees. Uh, and then that's the outside. The inside will, these are thicker cut steaks, so they'll keep their cool and they'll be outside the danger zone. And the salt will actually retard any bacterial growth. So this is actually a very safe way of cooking. Now we got some beautiful uh, squash and zucchini here. So we're gonna treat them with the same love and respect as we um, would with the steak. So I'm starting off with Lowry season salt. I'm sprinkling this on there and giving them a good coating. With, with the coating in place, I'm actually going to use uh, Mrs. Dash table blend. And this combination of Mrs. Dash and season salt is pretty common seasoning blend here in northwest Florida um, especially with restaurants and things of that nature they do like to use it if they're doing any type of uh, country cooking so we'll season these from here we'll do the other side and let them sit just like the steaks and so these will um, start releasing moisture and then as they release moisture then uh, right as we put them on the grill, I'll put a little bit of oil, very small amount of oil so that they don't stick to the grill, and I'll grill these. I also wanted to show, I'm using a plastic table for this um, video, and so what I've done is I've actually taken a piece of um, plywood, and um, it's, it's half inch plywood. Um, I wish I had three quarter inch but um, I put that scrap piece of plywood under the, um, the grill between it and the plastic and then I also created a, a heat shield with some aluminum foil and this is to um, thwart any type of combustion that I don't want to have take place. For my fire starting setup I've got some um, newspapers and paper towel with some cooking oil in my chimney. In the chimney is lump charcoal from hardwood. If you do not know how to make lump charcoal, I'll put a description to one of my videos on how to use a char can. And so you can make this yourself. You do not have to buy it. Now I'll show you next step. Now it's just a matter of putting this in there and getting the fire going with the paper. As you can see, I was burning my finger, but it already got started underneath. You can see it burning in there. And we got smoke up here. For expediency's sake, I went ahead and did some more matches around the side 
just to get this going good on all sides. If you're new to grilling, um, you want to wait until all the black on the charcoal is turned white and ashy and that there's no smoke or any type of fire flaming up or anything like that. So all this right now needs to burn off. That's the reason why we're doing this. And as you can see, I have it on the ground. That way um, it doesn't catch anything on fire. You can also put on your grill if your grill's big enough. But this hibachi is too small for this uh, fire chimney or charcoal chimney. And so um, you just need to make sure that you're safe. That's the main thing with this, be safe. Now you can start seeing the ash forming on the wood. It's super hot in there. You can look and see where it's white hot. So right now, I'm gonna say we're ready for this. And we'll put them on the grill. It's always best to pour the coals on the ground first and then place it on the table. Again, fire safety is important. With that done, now we just let the um, grill gate, grill grates get hot and we'll put the steaks on. Now it's time to put on the steaks. They're seasoned to perfection. Um, so we'll put them on right now. There's only room for two with this so I'll have to cook the third separately but you want that sear that's that's the main thing get that sear and so I've got it um, right now over the coals uh, the fire doesn't do the cooking it is the coals and so I want all that heat on there right now and I'll um, turn them in a minute I'll turn them kind of sideways to give them some of those hash marks that we like. And then um, I'll flip them over, do the other, and then I'll lift them up until we get a core temperature of 135 degrees Fahrenheit using a thermometer. Now we're going to turn these a little bit. Now it's time to put on the um, squash. Now tell me that isn't perfection right there. Good grief. Perfection. 